Hi everybody, my name is Iker Pedrosa. I'm a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I'm really glad to be here and to see some faces that, well, I didn't know in person. It's very nice to be, to be here in Breno. So um, I work for the identity management where I'm part of the SSSD team where we do the client side authentication. And I will do this presentation about FIDO2 authentication for centralized uh, managed users. So the agenda for today is that I will start with an introduction of what FIDO2 is and what, why this is interesting for us. Then I will explain a little bit the reality that the organizations and the customers that we have are facing. Then I will do a little uh, high level overview of what the, uh, this uh, implementation that we are going, doing is about. Next, I will do a little demo and I will share the testing playground that you can use to test this environment on your uh, laptops. Then I will speak about the future lines and what this, uh, this uh, new implementation holds for us. And finally, I will, will have time for the Q&A. So let's start with the introduction. So why Fido2 and WebAuthn is uh, interesting? First of all, because it's passwordless, so you don't need any password. Uh, there's a public key cryptography involved in it, and the, uh, we are using the public key to authenticate the user. Then uh, it's also interesting because it enables a strong authentication, as you will be able to use multi-factor authentication for the authentication. It also reduces the risk of a data breach because we will not be reusing the passwords uh, between sites. And finally, it reduces the phishing threats. So, what are currently the workflows that are enabled for FIDO2 and WebAuthn? The first one is the user authentication in a website. This is the most common one and the, the, the reason why this, uh, this protocol was born. Then we also have the local user authentication in a Linux system. Uh, for that, we use a PAM U2F module from Yubico. And then we have the Azure AD user authentication in Windows. Uh, so remotely managed users in, uh, for Windows can use uh, Azure AD hosted environments to authenticate. But we are missing one of the uh, workflows. And the objective of this uh, workflow is to do FIDO2 and WebAuthn authentication. Uh, we will use the passwordless part. Uh, we will also uh, enable the remotely managed users. They will be uh, stored in an LDAP server. Uh, more specifically, if you are using the free APA uh, server, you will have a better integration. Then we have the local authentication, as we will use the uh, FIDO2 key to authenticate locally. And finally, we'll also be uh, enabling the uh, Kerberos part, where you will be able to remote uh, to do a remote authentication to other services and places in the network. So this is uh, 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 the, the workflows that we'll be enabling, enabling here. So we have a user with a FIDO2 key. Uh, you will have to connect this key to the client where SSSD is running. And then there are two different workflows. On the one hand, we have the, uh, the remote authentication with the free API server where we send the information from the FIDO2 key to the server and uh, the Kerberos part is able to authenticate the user. But also in case the free API server is down or you are using some other LDAP server like uh, Active Directory or DS389, we also have the uh, client side authentication, which is local. For this case, it says what we do is we obtain the user credentials from the server and we do the authentication locally. So, now let's speak, let's speak about the reality. So uh, in January 2022, the US government released a memorandum which is titled Moving the US Government to our Zero Trust Cybersecurity Principles. Uh, the idea behind this is that we should move towards uh, more secure uh, environments. Um, the idea is to have these implementations finished by the end of 2024. Uh, so the guiding principle between the, uh, for this uh, zero trust model is that no actor, system, network, or service working within the security perimeter or outside of it is trusted. So all the, uh, all the communications must be encrypted and authenticated as soon as practicable. This way the users can use the uh, applications uh, from anywhere in the world or in the internet. 
well, this is a high level overview for this um, zero trust model, but let's focus on the part from the memorandum that speaks about uh, user authentication. So, uh, briefly explains, explained the, the memorandum uh, explains uh, several things. The first of all is that we should have the users uh, centrally managed, and then that we should use passwordless and multi-factor authentication to authenticate the users. Apart from that, the users should be able to sign in once and then use uh, the services or applications that are available in the IT infrastructure from this uh, company or agency or government. So the, the memorandum specifically mentions two different protocols. Uh, the first one is PIF, which are these smart cards that uh, SSSD and FreeAP already uh, enabled, enabled some time ago. And then it also mentions uh, FIDO2 and WebAuthn. And this is the uh, new implementation that we are working on right now. If you'd like to know more about this memorandum, it's available on the internet. You just, uh, you just need to check for the title that I mentioned in the previous slide and you will be able to read it. So now let's speak about the high level uh, technical details. So for the FIDO2 uh, workflow for remotely managed users, we have two different uh, Workflows. The first one is the registration, and then we have the authentication. For the registration, we need to connect the FIDO2 key to the device, and then use the SSSCTL command provided by SSSD to uh, register the user. This will output the um, key mapping data. This key mapping data needs to be stored in the LDAP server, and for that, we'll be able to use uh, some specific commands from PIPA, or in the case of uh, Active Directory, the graphical interface, or if you are using some other server, uh, LDAP add or LDAP uh, modify uh, commands. In the case of the free API server, you can do both steps uh, with a single command. I will show you later out this command. And then we have the authentication part, where we'll again need to connect the, the key to the system and uh, we'll use, well, some graphical interface or the terminal to authenticate. In the case of the free API uh, server, the Akerberos ticket sorry, <laughs> will be issued alongside the authentication. <laughs> Thank you. So what are the technologies involved in this uh, new implementation? On the one side, we have the FIDO2 and WebAuthn for passwordless and multi-factor authentication. Then we have the LDAP server to store and manage the uh, remotely managed users. Then we have the Kerberos part. Uh, well, as I already mentioned, in the free API case, uh, you will get a Kerberos ticket alongside the authentication. And finally, we have the SSSD to manage the client-side authentication. This is, it is in charge of integrating the uh, communication with the FIDO2 device, the LDAP server, and finally the Kerberos uh, ticket request. If you'd like to know more about this, uh, this implementation, you can check the following three uh, design pages. The first two are, out, are from SSSD, and the last one is from FreeIPA. We divided the SSSD part in two because it's kind of uh, kind of complex, and in the first part, we spoke about the uh, local passkey authentication, and in the second part, uh, we defined the uh, Kerberos integration. So now, let's uh, do the, the demo. Um, will the uh, people in the audience be able to hear me if I sit? No. Okay. Thank you. So first of all, I will uh, authenticate as an admin here. Okay. Um.
Okay, so I guess we'll have to skip this part. Uh, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you know what happens here in the demos. Uh, I will be able to show you later with the graphical interface how to do this. So just in case you want to um, to play around with this environment, it uses uh, containers, so it's kind of quite easy to do to to use. Um, the first link here it uh, it's a blog post that I wrote explaining all the steps to do to set up this environment. And in the second link, you have uh, the the copper repository where all the packages are are stored. So if you already have some environment with free APA and SSD, you can just use this uh, copper repository to install the packages. So now let's speak uh, about the future lines. I will also show you how 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 it works. So this uh, part of the presentation is about all passwordless authentication mechanisms. So currently in the department we are working not just on P2 authentication, but also in external identity providers. So let me show you here. Okay. So I need to redirect the P2 key here. Um, so now let's uh, select the Joe user, which is the one that has the pass keys or FIDO2 keys assigned. Okay, the first message here has insert your pass key device, then do something. The message is cut. So this is one of the things that we are working on right now with the desktop team to improve. We'd like to show the complete message here, which would be then press enter. Apart from that, you are also, also able to input some data here but we aren't expecting anything, and we need to improve <laughs> this. Next, you are requested to enter the pin, which I'm doing right now. And finally, the FIDO2 key uh, LED is blinking. Uh, this means that you need to input your, uh, your fingerprint here. As you can see, we've been able to authenticate locally. Um, but there's a problem here. In the case of the free API case, um, we are also uh, re um, requesting a Kerberos ticket. But what happens if we are offline or the network is down? In that case, we'll be able to do our uh, local authentication, but we'll not get the Kerberos ticket. So we need to uh, notify the user somehow that the user experience might be uh, affected by this uh, lack of the Kerberos ticket. So our idea is to show some message here while authenticating, like this welcome to Nomi 44 message, or maybe uh, show some notification in the notification toolbar. But uh, as I was already mentioning to you, uh, this isn't just about uh, passwordless, uh, this, is just a, this isn't about FIDO2 authentication, but about other passwordless methods. And the other method that we are implementing here is external identity providers. In that case, um, the, the workflow for authenticating and authorizing the user is kind of uh, complicated. I will need to show some instructions in the login page, which currently isn't possible. Apart from that, um, the user needs to use a web browser to uh, authenticate. The problem is that, well, it's kind of risky from the security perspective to have a full web browser in the login page because the, then some malicious user can go to the computer and start doing some nasty things. So we need to restrict the access to the web pages that the, the user is able to access. So I recorded here uh, the, the part for the FIDO2, but I will not show in it. And before I forget, um, we also have some some general uh, requirement here is that we would like, since we are implementing the new workflows in the Nome login, we would like to show the same user experience to them or a similar one when possible. So that's all from, uh, from my side and now I'd like to hear from you your questions. Uh, 
Sorry, sorry can you repeat the last part uh, loudly? So um, the question is that if we, we have enabled some way of uh, do mass enrollment for this uh, FIDO2 authentication, and the answer currently is no. It's a good feedback because, well, we'll have to think about these big organizations where there are thousands of users that would like to authenticate and register. So yeah, it might be a good idea to have some way of uh, doing this mass enrollment automatically. Thank you. Um, it's two factor in the sense that uh, you have the, the key and you can you should well or you can enter the pin or the fingerprint to add an additional factor of authentication. But the Kerberos ticket is more related to being able to identify yourself in other uh, network services or applications, so that you don't need to sign in more than once when you are on your computer. Okay. Um. I don't know whether you will be repeating that or not. Yeah. There is a way to do um, a mass enrollment without having to sign in multiple times. Yeah. Uh, but there is a way to do it with one key. Uh, it's not related to the mass provisioning, but it's not related to all of this work. Uh, if you use any of the um, LDAP services that the um, user by assistant needs to access uh, the permissions of these keys, um, then it's just a text entry there. How you produce this text entry? not surviving uh, active use where you have hundreds of times of insert out uh, the key into the device uh, for several maybe months or so. So it's normal that these keys fail and you need to replace them. And that's, that's kind of normal. So users become probably accustomed with the replacing these keys. But that's not
environmental problems to, to the fact that these contacts on, on, the, on the key simply wear out. Yeah, well, that, that's um, absolutely correct. Uh, the randomized question then, I actually met some kind of so So from, from user perspective, we do have some provision in, in IP. Uh, what Peter did not say is where you can get this. No. Uh, so this is in SSSD 290 already in Fedora Rawhide. You can use it if you have a corresponding IP version, which is not released yet, but it's in the Git master and in the proper app there. So you can install it and play with that. Then you get Kerberos Ticket. For the rest, if you store it in some existing LDAP store, like uh, Active Directory or uh, just a normal LDAP server, then you get authentication, but you don't get Kerberos tickets. So you have a good, good transition into, uh, wouldn't be able to do single sign-on into other network services, or into sudo and other farm services on the same machine. That's another kind of benefit um, but um, even with that, um, it's kind of self-service already. What we need to solve before we can give this for users by default is uh, a bunch of SLinux related problems. <laughs> this is no. hardware <laughs> access for uh, an application that runs in the background uh, of your system. Uh, and then you have to access it to the end role, you need to have access to the hardware, you need to give that access to these demons, demon running behind the scene, and so on. So we want to improve on this side uh, of, of it before you stumble on it. And now, Alexander, you've made my life very difficult because I want to know how to <laughs> summarize everything here that you said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, any more questions? That's multi-factor effects. 
something you have, something you possess. So this pin code that, that is there is the uh, uh, information that basically makes this key useless to, to a person who has no idea what the pin code for it. This is something that can be enforced by the admins. So I've entered the pin code, now I uh, press or touch except improving the user experience. So showing nicer messages, um, showing as much as possible of these uh, hints there, here and there. One hint that we are uh, debating currently is uh, how not to leak uh, enough information to attackers who try to understand whether this key works or not before you log in, but still providing enough information to the user Thanks to you.
Okay, so the first question is related to uh, other protocols that are able, available by YubiKeys like TOTP or HOTP. And if the, the, the requester wants to know if this memorandum is just about FIDO2 or these other protocols, uh, the question is, the answer is that it's only about FIDO2, nothing about other codes or anything like that. And the second question is about, uh, if I understood it correctly, about using some uh, crypto algorithms specifically or No, there isn't any reference to, to, to crypto algorithms that I'm aware of, but I guess since, since, you are using, uh, since you are working with the US government, you will need to follow their recommendations for crypto algorithms. So even if it's not here, um, the government already requests you to use some specific algorithms.